Hello, and thanks for joining us on Prime Politics. Things are becoming very interesting on the political scene. At this moment, we're 28 days away from the biggest political event this year. So, today on the show, we're going to take the next 60 minutes to take an in-depth look at some of the key issues and stakeholders that are critical to a seamless exercise. I'm Ladi Akiri Dunwali. That's right, and I'm Ijoma Onyato. Thanks for joining us. Now, the strength of this show is audience participation. We want to hear your views, and we have a live studio audience right here who will share their thoughts on the issue. So let's welcome our studio audience tonight. A round of applause for our studio audience. Fantastic. Thank you. And of course, what will the show be without you at home following us online and real time? So do be part of the program. Today we examine political party ideology and voter perception. Ideology is critical to understanding how political parties work and it can give insight into their modus operandi. More importantly, can the voters distinguish one from the other? Now, to shed some light on this, we are being joined on Prime Politics, we're very proud, by the People's Democratic Party candidate for the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mr. Dele Adjishibutu. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You. you can clap. Welcome. Thank you. We, also, we also have a social policy specialist, Toyosi Akirele Ugushiji. Thank you so much. And of course, Tursi's research work at Harvard University, which is her last academic exercise, <laughs> I hope, uh, was on political ideology, so she's very well fitted into this. As well as a national delegate of the All Progressives Congress, Barrister Paul Zaruma. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, before we dive into the discussion, let's take a look at some of the critical issues from our correspondent, Olu Phillips. <laughs> From the days of Nigeria's First Republic, political parties were better known or represented by certain ideologies or goals. It was these identities that differentiate them from others who aimed at political leadership. 1959, the election campaign to choose Nigeria's first government after... For instance, apart from party symbols, they were known by what they believed. In the then Western region, the action group was distinct by the signature project as captured in free education if they gained power. Another party, the National Party of Nigeria, rode on agriculture as one of its ideology and clearly the one. Manifestos are product of what political parties determine as its ideology. Ideology then can be seen as a set of beliefs and ideas that are the visions of the promoters with the hope that it will bring about improved standards of living and development to the people. Party is supreme than the president, than the governor. The president is the agent, the, both the president and the governor are the, are the agent of the party. When there is manifesto, it's the work of the duty of the party executive to supervise the president and the governor and see what, whatever they are doing is within the manifesto of the political party. But today, you can see even the chairman of the party doesn't even care with the manifesto of the party or the constitution of the party. It's just, just for the sake of the financial situation. Judging the Nigerian experience under the IBB military administration, which decreed two parties as a nexus idea of a little to the left and a little to the right, which produced the NRC and SDP, there has been no visible attempt to define or identify parties by ideology. Again, we moved from there to five political parties midwifed by the Abacha regime. There was clearly no ideology. <laughs> Three parties started the Fourth Republic, the PDP, APP, and the AD. Can we really pinpoint any underlying ideology? I can tell you we do not have political parties in Nigeria. I mean, at the start of this whole process, as part of the work I did to get the opposition going, uh, I was invited to give a lecture, a leadership newspaper's annual lecture from several years ago on political parties. I remember that lecture. Uh, most of the people who are in the current leadership who were in opposition then were at that lecture, uh, the Ladiwali Hall in Abuja. And I went through from Robert Michel's 1911 book on political parties and what political parties, and I went on and on and on. In fact, uh, 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 Mr. Amuka, Sam Amuka, who was there when I finished, said, said to me, 
I didn't know you were so deep. <laughs> but, you know, um, political parties matter. But we have refused to build political parties. What we have done is created machines to win elections. It reminds you of Richard Daly and machine politics in Chicago. So you win elections. But you need political parties to govern properly. We're getting away with murder, whether we are opposition or government. government for now. But it is not sustainable. What you do when government really doesn't work for the people is that you get so many disaffected people who are taking it and taking it. You get conditions that are leading to inequality in society that's broadening and broadening. And one day, those who have been left out will say, no mass. No more. And the system just comes tumbling. It doesn't matter how you deceive yourself. It's not sustainable. So how do we prevent this system from falling over? Enlightened self-interest says that those people, if they are clever, need to begin to ask themselves, how do we create political parties that create citizens, that make for participation, that make for public engagement, the marketplace of ideas resulting in people-owned processes for progress until we can do that. The West examples are a clear case of ideology-driven democracy. Labor parties versus the conservatives, the Democrats and the Republic. These are lines of thoughts and beliefs that guide voting patterns. Today, there are 91 political parties. What do you remember of any of them in terms of ideology or what they represent? Considering that perhaps the only difference is six and half a dozen cross carpeting they practically make the same promises. It will now be absolutely out of place to say the synonym, the synonym for politics in Nigeria is banditry, regardless of who is in power. Those who hear you say that would then ask the question, if you knew this, why did you go into it? Because the conditions and the parameters were different. The parameters back then was Buhari was the only man standing in terms of integrity. And I know so many of my colleagues who said that. And that was why we reached out to him not for me to become his running mate, but for us to look for a suitable candidate, which we did, who will run with him, and then we can assemble the best of the North and the best of the South to steer the affairs of our nation. But when I saw string bedfellows coming together, I knew this kite will not fly so far, because you can see the brick bat between APC and PDP as to the least of those who are corrupt. PDP is saying, if you're looking for the corrupt, Check in the APC. these are the people, they move from here to hide so that they will not be brought to book. More questions will be, has Nigerian's democracy benefited from its political party structure? How can ideologies be introduced in the contest by voters or citizens' army? Well, these are some of the questions and more a robust discussion may seek to answer. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. All right, now you've heard that background. Now let's just go straight to the discussion. And Toyosi, let me start with you. And being that you've done some research work on political ideology, um, you look at the U.S. and you see the Democrats and you see the, you know, um, the other party, you look the at the UK, the Republicans, thank you. You look at the UK and you see what you have there. But when you look at, exactly, but when you look at, and even the liberals, when you look at Nigeria, what do you see? Do you see any clear, distinct, <laughs> you're already laughing, any distinct line between um, the 91, let me say, parties that we have now? I mean, for me, as uh, one that has grown up in a country where you, the only way you can distinguish between one political party and the other is that one is... Stealing is not corruption. The other one is I belong to no one. I belong to no one. I belong to I don't belong to no one. I belong to everyone. Um, 
it's uh, simply demoralizing as a young person mm -hmm. growing up in this country, watching people who should be the ones who are custodians of the ideals of democracy as it were, given that in the very early days of our own lives, Nigeria was under very strong, solid military rule. Um, if you look at the leanings of, in the United States, you know, uh, the Democratic Party and the Republicans, you think about how they lean towards either being liberal or conservative. You think about the Liberal Party and the conservative in the UK. Um, and even smaller parties like the Green Party in the US. And even speaking look, of the UK. In the and last... even if you go to countries in Latin America like Mexico, the, the PRI, the Institutional you know, Revolutionary Party, um, they have strong policies. They have very uh, sterling ideals that guide, that form the overarching objectives of the party, such that if for any reason you belong, you, ha you are a member and you derail mm. from those overarching ideals, you become, you're almost declared personal non grata. Um, however, in this country, I don't see, um, in fact, this morning, there's, it's in the news, I'm not sure yet how confirmed it is that one chairman of a party had said that if you join your, our party, you know, um, your sins are forgiven. And so um, it's extremely worrisome because typically part, political parties are supposed to be vehicles mm. that influence political debates and public policy in a way that deliver sustainable governance to citizens of a country where people are able to relate and identify with what this party represents mm. and decide that they will vote on the strength and on the basis of the identification of the, you know, what that party says that they represent. Uh, but they have manifestos and then they have their list of promises, or at least you're able to identify. Uh, no, I don't, this I don't think that media. Nigerian political parties have manifestos in a situation where you can't even hold them accountable. The reason why you have manifestos is because you put out a list, a, docu a comprehensive document mm -hmm. that citizens can understand that is in exhaustive in a way that citizens can hold you mandatorily accountable based on their understanding of what you've said that you are going to do for them. Yeah. What you have is political parties in Nigeria making un unreasonable promises. Even when you place them as an informed citizen, when you place side by side the promises they've made mm -hmm. and the resources that we have as a country mm -hmm. on ground, mm -hmm. there is no way those promises are feasible. And then because we have, we're a country that is ruled by men, a country where institutions are not placed in such a way, are not empowered mm -hmm. with the capacity to be able to hold public servants accountable, you then find that those manifestos, the, the politicians can get away with murder. Let me just let him respond to that, because I know you're of the PDP. Um, we can't hold you accountable, as she has said, and the manifestos are just, it's just a piece of paper. Is that what you think? Not a piece of paper. The truth is, uh, a lot of us have not taken time to read the manifesto and understand the ideology. First of all, I want to be clear about something. There is a manifesto. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that manifesto is based on an ideology. That's right. Okay, so maybe instead of starting from the end and coming back to the beginning, mm -hmm. let's start from the beginning. What's the ideology? What's the PDP ideology? What PDP stands for, uh, starting from the slogan, power to the people. Uh, PDP stands for the people. The interesting thing about our society is we look at the party as uh, maybe an institution that has fallen from heaven. Uh, the parties are made up of citizens of Nigeria. Uh, what do we have in terms of our culture, in terms of our value? How much do we respect our value as citizens of Nigeria? This really has been the challenge that we have. If you look at the document, the constitution of uh, People's Democratic Party, the manifesto, you realize that this is the finest document you can find around. Now, what, what attracts me as a person to PDP is one single fact that it offers equal opportunity for everyone to attain the highest possible position. For instance, in my constituency, I have four party chairmen, and three of them are non indigenous They are not Yorubas. I'm from Lagos. Mm. They, they, they are Nigerians from other parts of, of this country. And th this is what you see across.